the country's geoscience data. The strategy also proposes a collaboration between the Department of Mineral Resource and Energy with Industrial Development Corporation to ensure that ex exploration provides for the inclusion of the emerging exploration companies. It also reinforces the research role to be played by research institutions such as MINTEC and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research and the Skills Development Program. The strategy is the product of a broader consultation between government, industry and other social partners. The mining industry remains the vital livelihood of the country's economic ecosystem. In operationalizing of the Batupili revitalization strategy, Cabinet approved the operationalization, I beg your pardon, Cabinet approved the operationalization of the Batupili revitalization strategy. The strategy is an outcome of a number of researches conducted by both government and non-governmental institutions on the effectiveness of 1997 Batupili policy. The strategy provides the five pillars which will guide the minimum standards to be adhered to by all departments. The proposed in the intervention will give effect to the citizen-centered public service delivery program. This strategy will give effect to the strengthening of the capable, ethical, and developmental state, which remain a critical intervention in serving citizens of the country. It will also strengthen the implementation of eight principles of Batupili, ultimately it seeks to provide behavioral change within the public service. On, amendment, on amending the policy on high demand spectrum and the policy direction on the licensing of wireless open access network, Cabinet approved the amendment of the policy on high demand spectrum and policy direction on the licensing of WUN to be published for public comment. The proposed <coughs> amendments remove the requirements to license the wireless open access network. Cabinet in 2019 approved this policy on high demand spectrum and the policy directions on the licensing of the wireless open access network to give effect to the Electronic Communications Act of 2005 the, licenses of high de the licensing of high demand spectrum remains critical to the country's economic recovery drive. On the tax relief fund, cabinet tax relief fund, cabinet approved the extension of the cutoff date for the application for the COVID-19 TRF from 31st March to 31st March 23. The tariff with a budget amount of one. 135 billion was allocated as once of payment to mitigate the negative financial impact of COVID-19 on the taxi industry. The National Empowerment Fund is responsible for the disbursement of the compensation to all legal taxi operators with, the, with valid operation, operating license, including minibus taxis, metered taxis, and e-hailing partners. On the bills, South African Post Office Amendment Bill of 2021, Cabinet approved the publications of the SAPO Amendment Bill for public comment. The bill seeks to amend the SAPO Act 2011, Act 22 of 2011. The proposed amendments seek to enable SAPO to take advantage of the te technological developments in its environment. It will be able to revise its duties and expand its mandate. It will be a service provider of universal postal and courier, an integrated logistic e-commerce, and will be a digital hub for business and communities. The proposed amendments, which are aligned to the National Integrated ICT Policy White Paper of 2016, also make improvements to governance provisions of SAPO. On the South African Post Bank Amendment Bill of 2021, Cabinet approved the submission of the South African Post Bank Amendment Bill of 2021 to Parliament. The bill amends the Post Bank Act 2020 to align it with Banks Act 1990. It provides for the establishment of South African Post Bank holding company in terms of the Bank Act of 1990. The bill has gone through public consultation to strengthen it. 
Once adopted in law, the post bank will be able to operate as a separate entity with its regulatory framework outside SAPO. On the Radioactive Waste Management Fund Bill, Cabinet approved the publication of the Radioactive Waste Management Fund Bill for public comment. The bill provides for the creation of the fund as directed by the Radioactive Waste Management Policy. The funds will be collected to be used towards the management of radioactive waste. It will enable the setting up of the infrastructure to handle, provide storage and oversee the permanent disposal of the radioactive waste. The fund will be managed through the National Radioactive Disposal Institute. South Africa benefits on clean energy generated through the Quebec nuclear power station. Also, South Africa remains one of the biggest producers of the radio pharmaceutical products that diagnose and treat cancer in the world. On the upcoming events, official visit by the President of Mozambique, Presid President Cyril Ramaphosa will be hosting his Mozambican counterpart, His Excellency President Philip Nyusi on Friday 11 March 2022. The visit will further strengthen mutual, regional, and continental cooperation between the two nations. It also reinforces bilateral relations and cooperation between South Africa and Mozambique, both politically and economically. The presidential meetings were in the Northwest. On Saturday, 12 March, President Ramaphosa will lead a delegation to Northwest to conduct a presidential meeting. During this event, the president and leaders from all three spheres of government will interact with communities in the Northwest. The inaugural presidential MBS of 2022 provides a platform for the president to engage with communities on their experience of daily, of daily life and service delivery by government. Citizens will also engage directly on their proposal on how we can grow South Africa together without leaving anyone behind as it was stated in the President's SONA address. Building on the TDM, which calls for greater cooperation between citizens and public representatives, Cabinet urges community in the Northwest to use this opportunity to engage directly with the President and to make their concerns or proposal heard. On the Human Rights Day, Cabinet welcomed the series of dialogue and events under the theme Open Code, the year of unity and renewal, protecting and preserving our human rights gains, close quote, being conducted as part of commemorating this year's human rights on Monday, 21st March 22. This also contributes to assessing the progress of the nation's constitutional democratic project. Cabinet calls on all South Africans to use Human Rights Month to foster greater social cohesion, nation building, and a shared national identity. It is our duty as a nation to strive for inclusive socio-economic development while ensuring that we combat racism, racial discrimination, and all related intolerances. On the National Water Week, the National Water Week campaign takes place from Sunday 20 to Saturday 26 March 2022 it focuses on the need to protect and conserve our water resources. Despite much heavier than normal rainfall in many parts of the country over the past few months, South Africa remains a water-scarce country. It is one of the 30 driest countries in the world, and most of its water comes from rainfall. Cabinet reassures citizens that our tap water is safe for human consumption as confirmed by the National Institute for Communicable Disease and reports about drinking water linked and reports about unsafe drinking water linked to typhoid fever are, are also false. Government is prioritizing water reticulation in communities. On special messages, we express congratulation uh, on the uh, cabinet extended its congratulations and well wishes to the following South African women's cricket team who are flying the national flag high at the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup in New Zealand. Athlete Stevens Mukoka, who has broken the men's 50 kilometer world record in a time of two hours, 
40 minutes and 13 seconds in the net bank re- runified breaking barriers race in Kabeha Eastern Cape on Sunday 6 March 2022. Condolences Cabinet expressed condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Mandla Gamabuza, 47, an artist orator and the former president of the South African Students Congress. He was the former public servant in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. On appointments, all appointments are subject to the verification of qualifications and relevant clearance. Mr. Zayn, Udin Dango as DG at the Department of International Relations and Cooperation. Ms. Pindile Patronella Mkwanazi as Deputy DG, Learning and Professional Development at National School of Government. Mr. David Mapita as Chief Executive Officer of Mine Health and Safety Council. Persons to serve in the International Air Service Council Ms. Nom Velis Ontanjana, Chairperson, Ms. Nare Tupana, Vice Chair, Ms. Grant Riogon, Son, Mr. Tumelo Shifupa, and Ms. Fumelani Dokas Mbulaen. Persons to serve in the Air Service Licensing Council, Mr. Leroy Musa Sibande, Chairperson, Ms. Riasibe Sharon Kekana, Vice Chair, Mr. Ricky Roger Reni, Mr. Zonika Lianda Mchali, and Mr. Ramova Emmanuel Mbue. Thank you very much. Thanks for your listening. Thank you very much, uh, DJ. Thank you very much, Minister. I will take questions. Willie, who is giving us questions? Have you where you are number one? Thank you. Can you wait a bit for a second? <laughs> okay. okay. from our leaders in terms of how to get us out of this mess. We're talking about stage six low shedding. Um, really, we'd expect the president even to take a firmer responsibility on how to steer this ship. Are there any discussions of the sort in cabinet on how to get us out of this mess, or is it an admission that government has failed when it comes to these rolling blackouts? Um, and then can we also touch maybe on the state capture report? Was it discussed at all? At cabinet, the implication of um, the energy minister Kwetemandashe on what needs to be done was it discussed on what needs to be done by government when it comes to the report itself. Um, you mentioned the issue around Ukraine, but I just want to maybe get your response on Russia now bombing a children's hospital. Any franca discussions around what needs to happen with this, given that now, of course, it's involving even the bombing of children's hospitals. And on the public violence, while you might have condemned it, you're not re- really giving us direction on what needs to happen, because there are, of course, underlying issues, whether they be xenophobic or whether they be genuine, when it comes to issues of um, unemployment and South Africans being overlooked. What does government stance on what realistically needs to happen? Because um, these public spaces of violence that we're seeing around Alexandra don't seem like they'll dim down anytime soon. Of students in the Ukraine, 
Is the government partnering with any other private companies to assist with the evacuation? Um, Tom was also asking, has the government discussed the possible extension of the national state of disaster beyond the 15th of March? When can the country expect alternative legislation to manage COVID-19 to be finalized? Um, Kulegani Makubani from Fen24 is asking, um, what was said at the cabinet meeting, if anything, about National Treasury Circular on the abeyance of tenders from mid-February, and can the minister confirm if there are going to be any new draft preferential procurement guidelines released soon? Um, then Stelele Ludla from Business Report is asking, will President Ramaphosa be addressing the nation anytime, anytime in the next five days, seeing that the current uh, national state of disaster expires on Tuesday? Um, Stelele is also asking, when is Cabinet expecting the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy to table a review methodology for the petrol price? I have more questions, Did you should I continue? Minister, do you want to take that, this badge? Or is yeah. Let's take this badge and then the Minister will come back again. You want to? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, to our viewer on the blackout, nothing mentioned. I think on an ongoing basis, this is the matter that we are seized with. Sometimes it will find a way in our statement, not because it's not being dealt with on an ongoing basis, not because the relevant departments are not doing something about it. I think to show the seriousness of government, you read the statement of the president in the Sona on the series of interventions and, uh, the, <coughs> and the response by the Minister of Energy saying that by the end of this coming financial year about 7,000 megawatts would have been put in the system. The, the point I want to make of you is that the fact that the infrastructure now is in trouble and that always have symptoms. It's not going to change until all these interventions serve the purpose for which they are being brought in. In other words, the patient is sick. Sometimes the patient walks fully. Sometimes there's difficulty in breathing. Until there's a cure, those hiccups are going to take place. But we'll always communicate like ESCOM has been doing. I've been following them doing their communication. In other words, there are various ways in which we communicate this. Not everything in every statement that we have comes in our, but it's got nothing to do with whether we care or not. Our interventions, the SONA address, and also the budget speech will indicate the interventions, including the minister's response in this matter. All I'm trying to say, we have demonstrated our worry about this more now by committing to execute particular tasks rather than saying, Every day we know there's trouble because we've said that several times. So I think I'm, I'm trying to send a message that the fact that that statement is not here cannot be an indication that we don't care. We are troubled by this. Let me just repeat this, uh, viewer. The minister would have told you in the budget speech that uh, our growth prospect had been revised down from 5.1. And he would have said in that speech, the challenges are both domestic and international. And internationally, he explains, but internally, the riots and other things, he included energy there as one of the reasons. The unreliable availability. In other words, this thing is on our radar screen on a daily basis. Um, you are saying state capture. Uh, state capture. You, you remember, one of the major things I, I keep on saying about this uh, is that the president did uh, what he does on these uh, commission of inquiry reports. It's almost unprecedented, by the way. 
the state capture one you know of uh, is in your website, commas and full stop, nothing that has been edited. And there's clear commitment that we are analyzing that. Once we complete analyzing a report by the president on how to implement it is anticipated to be by end of June, but one is no longer sure now that there's been extension uh, to, to what to call that we're working on that. But in other words, the report as you know it in its entirety, the president will present an implementation plan so that if there are any gaps in the implementation plan, the, the, the public is there to commit. Uh, when it comes, I always said, uh, when it comes to my colleagues, I always leave that uh, in the office of the president. Uh, but having said that, I'm sure you will remember that the minister did say he would actually take this matter on review, but the, the final say on that is actually, I, I always prefer to leave that with the president uh, because I cannot claim to know what the president is thinking about it, but all I know, the president and this government is committed to implement the recommendations of the state capture without with leaving no stone unturned. I once said in one of the interviews, probably even the stone in your sitting room. Uh, now, on the Ukraine, I think you must have read that from the president desk on Monday on this matter, and the consistent stance of South Africa, that we always are against conflicts that lead to loss of life. Even more disturbing when it costs the life of children. But the question that must always be, the question that is always asked, what do we do? The, 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 this government led by this president, whenever you enter a complex, a conflict of this complexity, you always have to ask a question, how will our participation in South Africa improve the situation? Because here is a very complex, uh, it, it, it's, it's a conflict underlined by complex factors. Russia would have had their reasons, West they have their views, but at the end of the day, it actually re results in people fighting and people dying. How you enter that, you must answer the question, how am I improving the situation? That's why South Africa avoids taking any side on this matter. Because the best intervention you can make is the best possible solution that South Africa can provide. So that's why we say we call for peace. We are against the killing of people for, or for whatever reasons. We always believe in negotiated uh, peaceful resolutions. Uh, so we cannot be comfortable about the bombing of children, having said that. Uh, on the Alex violence underlying factory, and underlying factors. I'm sure, uh, of you, uh, you must have followed the Minister of Labor <coughs> tabling a policy to deal with this matter. We know the underlying, what some of the underlying factors, <coughs> so can I get water? Some of the underlying factors in this matter is, a, is economic insecurity by South Africans. And, uh, and, and the failure of South African business to actually abide with the established what we call targets. Because all over Africa now, I'm sure you must have heard a lot of pronouncements how various countries are trying to protect jobs for their citizens. But South Africa's approach is of such a nature that, that we acknowledge that you can't cut South Africa out of the continent, but there are, made, there are certain set of jobs which we think should be protected for South Africans. But at the end of the day, the basic issue here is to make sure that as we move even to that Africa, which is seamless, one, we do we walk that path with legality. Because we, we usually argue sometimes that if you allow illegality because you want to resolve our problem, the outcomes of that can actually be dire. You cannot say because you've got a noble atten intention. Therefore, you must be illegal in pursuit of that because the West can come out of that. Therefore, that's why we're saying no form of disorder
of smashing infrastructure of beating people who happen not to belong to your country will resolve this. matter. It can only be resolved within the laws of the country. So we, we know the underlying issues. We might not have shouted them enough, but we've said them a number of times to prove that we are intervening in terms of policy. And that policy is being consulted. Uh, on the aspect Uh, 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 committing to evacuate. We are, we are working with all those who, in, who are intervening. We are working with all those who are intervening in assisting us to evacuate South Africans. Even, even other Africans in that matter who happen to find themselves in this conflict. And then a uh, possible extension of on the COVID-19, we have said that uh, we have made our clear intentions to do away with the Disaster Act, but we have said that we don't want to leave a vacuum because the biggest challenge is yeah, this thing is so unpredictable. You must have means in case it comes at an unexpected time. You must have means to be able to take care of that situation. So you need to, to leave measures in as far as that is concerned. I have no doubt very soon there will be other announcements in as far as that is concerned. On the National Treasury, I'm sure you, I hope they are speaking about the court order. Our understanding is that that matter is being discussed to make sure that the work of government is protected because if not properly handled, it can have a huge impact with regard to the delivery program of the country, uh, be it transformative, be it turning the economy around. A lot of work is being done about that. One of the things that are being contemplated, if, if I remember very well, is that uh, the court suspended the invalidity of what it said is wrong until certain regulations are put in place. And then we, there's, a, there's an attempt to seek clarity around that. So where we are, there's work that is being done with regard to that. And uh, I remember even the Treasury issued some orders on how departments must conduct themselves in the interim. Uh, what was the other question? Hmm? I'm not sure if I, if I heard the question. Can it be repeated? Yes. Uh, I cannot exactly give the specific date on that. All I know, even if you listen to the Minister of Finance on the budget, that there's work being done to, to minimize the strain that derives from the direction of that expense. But I cannot give you the exact date, exactly when is that going to happen, but work is being done in as far as that is concerned. I think we'll take the last round. Avi still wants to come back. Okay. Proceed. Minister, um, you mentioned that cabinet is troubled by the continued blackouts. 
The millions of South Africans are also troubled by those very blackouts, hence I need to come back to that question. You did not give direction, Minister, as to what Cabinet says needs to be done to get us out of this mess. You mentioned the patients that, that limp sometimes and sometimes um, is able to walk. According to Eskom itself, we are headed for stage six. That means this patient is literally dying. You're not giving us directions from the cabinet meeting as to what the leaders are saying needs to happen. To me, this is an admission of government saying that we're failing to resolve this Eskom issue. What, what was the clear, decisive measures, um, Minister, that were taken from that cabinet meeting on what needs to happen, but more importantly, when this Eskom crisis will be remedied? And the other question is around um, maybe cabinet discussions on the opening of stadiums to more than 2,000 spectators. Were there any indications on that behalf? Okay, let's take yours. All right. Um, the next one is from Paul, um, the care from Bloomberg. He's asking a deputy minister of finance. Um, inform cabinet about the 16 billion investment by Ford in Tuane, um was at risk because the municipality had not secured electricity supply for the project. If he did, what is cabinet's plan to reduce this risk? Um, and then we have a question um, from. What, um, uh, what is Cabinet's view on the announcement by the Western Cape Premier, Ellen Windy, that the provincial government of the Western Cape will not attend any events or meetings organized by the Rus Russian Federation or any of its consulates and a Russian uh, Federation's embassy and consulates officials are no longer welcome at the, at the events of the province of the Western Cape. And then my last question is um, it, what the person doesn't state where they are from, uh, but the question is um, I would like to know when the President of the Republic of South Africa is going to appoint the Chief Justice of South Africa. That's it. Can, 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 can you repeat the last question? When the president will appoint the chief justice. Chief justice. Okay. I think it's usually the last round, but we'll see whether there's somebody. Oh, Benny. Sorry. I don't know what to say of you or to you on this. All I'm saying is that the government is in dealing with ESCOM challenge. On an ongoing basis, communication is going to come out. I'm very careful now to give you the details of exactly what is happening in that institution. I would prefer to actually visit that once I speak with the minister concerned. But I have no doubt, work is being done. I, I, I think we must accept that ESCOM has gone. There are moments where ESCOM would have gone in the worst situation, but we've been able to, to rise as we are trying to actually uh, ensure that there's energy availability. I, I prefer not to deal with some of the details, but all I want to say to you, uh, there isn't much new that is happening now, which has not been a pain before. It is informed by the state of the damage of the machinery that is actually pertaining at the moment. We can look at it whatever way we are looking at it. The ultimate solution is ensuring that we improve the, uh, the energy availability factor of ESCOM. Do, do South Africa needs to be briefed better? I agree with you. It's something that I think we'll actually attend to and even improve. Uh, with regard to what you might think we have not told you today. It was not an item. Yeah, it was not an item. It, it had nothing to do with, un, with, with its unimportance. 
because there's a minister who deals with it on a daily basis. You only, you only discuss these matters of you if there's something new that needs a cabinet's response. But if it's, it's a problem that have been on average ongoing, that is within the technical capability and the minister deployed in that area. But if there's something that requires cabinet to take a decision, is at this point in time that would have been tabled before the cabinet. Whatever problems now that are pertaining are the problems that they've been confronted with over time. So there's nothing, as far as I'm concerned, that required cabinet decision. I repeat, do we need more information to communicate to South Africans? We'll always not, uh, there's no way we'll say we're perfect in communicating that. We'll always try to improve in dealing with the anxieties of South Africans. I agree. We can, we can deal with that. Right? Uh, what is the other issue? Uh, again, the issue of stadia, we are awaiting the... We are, remember the first figure that was proposed, uh, the sporting community felt it was not cost effective. So we are looking towards a situation where when the state of disaster goes off, bigger numbers which will be cost effective. For at this point in time, I don't think it is wise to comment on, on the numbers of what to call of sport. What else did come out? 16 billion. Okay. No, we've got to follow that one up. It's not a matter that does. The 16 billion in Swane. Uh, did, you, did they say it's lacking electricity? Uh, yes. Yes, no, I think we've got to follow up at the risk of giving false information. Statement of Alan, Alan Winde. Okay. Uh, when it come to the Western Cape, we, we have expressed the state of the position of South Africa as far as Ukraine is concerned that we are, we are not intending to take sides in this. But uh, I don't think we've got power to prevail over who DA wants to meet and who they don't want to meet. That is beyond our control. But as a country, we've articulated the position of the country and we're comfortable with that. We've answered that question a number of times. That that is in the purview of the president. But we know it will happen soon. And uh, we know that it's a president's concern that it might happen so. You must understand there's a lot of considerations before you take these decisions. But again, that is in the president's purview. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have come to the end of this post-cabinet briefing, and thank you very much, and thanks for coming.